Hello, we're in Peebles. Overnight, the tour of Britain entered Scotland. We dodged passport control, crashed through customs and entered the country by stealth. New country then, and a new leader too. So, Chris Sutton's reign at the top of the table proved to last no longer than it took to say Newcastle Gateshead. The yellow jersey he wore to the start line in Darlington was doomed the minute that these three launched their break. Tanel Kangert, Kai Royce and inevitably perhaps the plucky Belgian Thomas de Ghent. That trio sharing the work and building a lead over the peloton allowed de Ghent to sweep up all but two of the sprint points as well as enough mountains points to stuff both those jerseys in his overnight bag. Behind them, the bunch got organised as Columbia went to the front and eventually the pressure told. First, Kangat cracked and then eventually De Ghent dropped off too, leaving Royce alone but far from home. With the odds stacked against him, he dropped his shoulders and time trialled onto the Tyne. Here he comes up to the line. The stage victory, stage two in Newcastle Gateshead goes to the Dutchman, Kai Roos, and he's loving every moment of it. So this is how it looks. Royce leads the way by 16 seconds as Chris Sutton drops to second. Edvil Bosenhagen is in fifth place. Russ Downing in sixth. Malcolm Elliott, by the way, at 48 years of age, is in ninth place. Well, if you're looking for Bradley Wiggins, you might have to carry on looking right the way down the list. He's way back in 88th place, but he's only 37 seconds off the lead, so that's nothing that one day on the attack couldn't deal with. But what of the new yellow jersey, though? Well, as comeback stories go, this one's hard to beat. It was two summers ago, at the age of 22, Kai Royce was out on a training ride alone. His life, though, was about to change forever. About uh, two years ago, I. Uh make a very hard crash uh, in the mountains. He went up in Val d'Isère, it's a really big climb, and uh, on the top he turned around, and then on his way back he, uh, he was hit by a car, uh, and then somebody found him a, f a few hours later or something. The, yeah, still in 11 day comas, uh, and yeah. So it was uh, very hard, uh, yeah, weeks, days, hours. When you break a leg, everybody sees, and, and after a few weeks you can you can pedal again or whatever. Uh, but when something wrong and when when something damaged in your brain, then then it's, it's it's very hard to understand what's what's going on. And he had a he had a very terrible and difficult time. For my family, uh, everything it is it is. I was not guy. I was an uh, other person. Uh, so yeah. But yeah, I'm now happy and uh, it's now great. Yesterday I saw something what's, 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 what's really amazing. I mean, for a normal human being, a normal rider was, was amazing. And then especially the this, this story, what I just told you, that makes it more special uh, also. You think today you will be riding and your team will be riding with a lot of emotion? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. I'm uh, uh, last uh, evening, I'm uh, sometimes a little bit crying. And, uh, yeah. It's understandable. Good luck today. Thank you. Well, I've dragged Graham Jones out for a coffee. After all, it's the third early start in a row, and I think, frankly, we're all in need of one. Graham, that's a remarkable story, isn't it, with Kai Royce? And uh, Rabobank are down here on the tour with one man fewer than they should be. Now, how difficult is it going to be for them to defend this yellow jersey? It's going to be really difficult. Um, one of the problems they've got uh, also is that uh, Royce is going to have the efforts of yesterday still in his legs so he's going to be a little bit tired he'll want to be doing as little as possible and to control a race with just four riders is, is really tough I mean we know a lot of the bigger races it's eight nine riders so uh, they've got a long day ahead of them today absolutely well let's look at that day that lies ahead of them in fact let's look at the route map they will have been studying this morning over their Weetabix Stage three starts and finishes in Scotland, just Peebles. Deep in the borders is the start point before we dash for England and like a runaway bride, the peloton ends up in Gretna Green, 153 kilometres down the line. There's a test and cat two climb, bang in the middle of the profile, which is long enough but probably too shallow to launch a serious attack. And besides, the run-in is all pretty much downhill. Root skirts through the borders, more famous perhaps for salmon fishing in the Tweed, that's a river as well as a jacket, and rugby. This is a countryside which summons up to any sporting fan the iconic voice of legendary rugby commentator Bill McLaren, whose hometown of Hoyek gets brushed by the route of today's stage. It all ends in Gretna on the site where the old blacksmith priest used to tie the knot for eloping couples from over the border in England. Well, Graham Jones, you're doing a bit of a Christian prudom on us on this tour. You've kept things really tight at the beginning of the tour and the big gaps haven't appeared yet, but 
Today's a little bit lumpier. What do you expect from today? It is, and often um, it's a tradition sort of in tour, um, tour riding uh, that uh, the third day can be, it's always a difficult day, two, two days of racing in the legs. But uh, I still think, uh, although there are a few hills today, they're not really that difficult, and they're also still quite a long way from the finish. So I'm, I'm fully expecting it to be uh, a little bit similar to what we've had the last couple of days, early breakaway, and uh, the peloton to chase it down towards the end. And uh, I, I do foresee a uh, bunch sprint today. It's quite a spectacular finish, actually. It's five kilometres, all very straight. Well, it's a little bit overcast here, so the weather might throw a little bit of a random factor in there. Who knows? In the meantime, though, that's the theory. Let's get on with the practice. Let's join your commentary team, Anthony McCrossan, and first of all, Hugh Porter. We are 10. Well, this is the start of stage three in the heart of Peebles, and there are massive crowds that have turned out here to support the riders. The whole of Peebles is just about full. This is the high street, and Alistair Sutton, the convener of Scottish Borders Council, gets the field underway. There's the yellow jersey, Kai Roos of the Rabobank team, this Dutchman who no doubt will be able to try and hang on to his uh, top spot in the Tour today. 16 seconds is his advantage over his nearest challengers. All the school children are out and the atmosphere is certainly a carnival atmosphere. Look at this, it is so impressive. Well, we're looking here, all the school children are having a great day out as we look there at the yellow jersey in the middle of the picture. And the, the riders have been saying that they are so motivated by the crowds who've turned out to watch the Tour of Britain as Roos maybe, maybe just contemplates what a fantastic victory that was yesterday. Talking to Garen Thomas there in the red from Barlow World, a man who won a gold medal in Beijing. He was one of the members of the team pursuit that set a world record. We will never forget that moment. Yes, it is a bit chilly today and uh, maybe when we get into the uh, climbs it'll get even colder. Martin Mortensen rubbing his hands there to warm himself up. The Vacon Soleil team have ridden so well. We're at kilometre zero now here. And that is at Glentress Forest, part of the massive mountain bike area. Well, nobody too keen to take it on at the moment. We've even got riders wearing leg warmers there. So that just flags up the temperature, which has dropped significantly. What am I saying? Here is the first attack, and it looks like the German champion is trying to go clear. This is the first move, and this is Martin Reimer. Martin Reimer there in the German champion's colours. You can see the flag of Germany all over the Cervelo test team kit, and now one rider responding, powering his way across the gap, and it looks to me like a top sport Vanden rider. Tell you what, they don't wait long, do they? They want to get on with it straight away. There's no promenading here and let us just confirm Anthony's call. You are right. So the brace of riders starting to go away from the main field. In fact, the style of that rider looks a little bit like Thomas de Gent to me, who really has been the man of the match on day one and day two. Well, in the middle of the peloton there, the uh, rider from the Candy TV Marshalls Pastor squad was Malcolm Elliott having a talk. But look at that, Hugh. It is Thomas de Ghent. You can see the King of the Mountains jersey just behind that gilet top. And he's also the leader, let us not forget, in the intermediate sprint competition. He looks as though he's having a chat there to his team manager back in the car. Now then, the Halfords Bike Hood team. There is the man that's been in the war so far. That was Rob Hales. And he's trailing on the mo at the moment on General classification and uh, of course if you're well down on classification you may get an opportunity to slip away because you will not be guarded now then look like a couple more riders there trying to go off the front of the main field yes you can just see them in the distance to add strength to the leading two well I think some of these riders are probably thinking Thomas de Ghent he's been on the attack so far in this year's Tour of Britain for 153 miles and uh, I talked to him this morning and said don't you like riding in the peloton then and he said well I like to attack as another move goes off the front a Rafa Condor rider yeah it is the colours of a Rafa Condor rider the black livery and uh, it's good to see them having a go the manager of that team of course is uh, John Herity a former British champion and Herity I feel sure will have said to his team now look we want to get down the road we want to start to figure in some of the moves here yes there it is and you can see him there clearly that's Darren Lapthorne actually and Lapthorne is a very good strong bike rider well immediately onto the front of the peloton go the entire Rabobank team a Lapthorne the former Australian road race champion a winner of a tour series round this year and they're going to make the junction and that's uh, Rob Ruig with him as well from the Vacon Soleil team 
Now, he's actually quite uh, well down on overall classification, nine minutes back. Uh, so I sh he'll be uh, giving his head, I feel sure. But they make in the junction, as you say, four riders now clear. And it is very, very early on. Well, but what a move there. It is confirmed on the screen. The names that we have called. Now then, all different teams as well. One minute and 47 is the advantage. We'll take a break. Welcome back, and the riders are uh, getting close to the first sprint of the day. And that is going to be at Melrose. And that, of course, is right outside the famous rugby club. Well, on the front of the peloton now, with a gap at 2 minutes and 27 seconds of the Rabobank team, as Thomas de Ghent has taken off his gilet, so he's warmed up a little bit. He's in the King of the Mountains jersey there at the front of this quartet. So it is de Ghent looking pretty strong, but the attack is coming from the German champion, Martin Reimer, and it's Reimer. This is the first show that we've seen of Reimer in the race. He's been getting his legs organised in the first two stages and he made a real fist of that, didn't he? De Ghent hung on to second place and it looked like Ruig for third. Yes, it is. And Lapthorne just picking up the one point for fourth. Now, that's a pretty impressive show by Reimer. He's a great bike rider, Martin Reimer, the German champion. He's an interesting character. He was 11th in the Tour of Qatar earlier on in the season. German rider, likes Italian food and wants to open a restaurant in Sydney when he retires. Well, there we are. And the Rabobank team are on the front. There they are, all lined out in perfect linear formation, just keeping the rhythm uh, high so that this group doesn't get too far ahead, although it is nearing three minutes, so I should think they're going to start to get a little bit concerned if it goes over that. But here they are, Reimer on the front, King of the Mountains, tucked into the wheel, and that is De Ghent. Now, what well, is he saying here? I don't know, he was having a bit of a conversation, uh, just working out, yep, they're going to turn right, he was just double-checking <laughs> uh, which uh, road they were going to take there, and a little bit of confusion, but no, they're on the right road, and uh, they carry on working. Well, De Ghent looked back as well, didn't he? Uh, I don't know whether he was looking back to see whether there was a marshal there or what, but there's nothing to worry about, because this course, you cannot go off course at all, because it is rooted so magnificently. The rubber bank team still on the front, and keeping the pace quite high, and look at the crowds on the side of the road all the way here they flocked out to see the race 122 kilometers still remaining and the lead now two and a half minutes so this gap is uh, going quite it's stabilizing now so these riders will be quite confident as we see the rider on the front rug as the peloton now turn right so we're definitely going the right way rabo bank resplendent in their orange kit looking very very comfortable and they're going to have a long day in the saddle at the front of this peloton and of course they are looking after the interests of the yellow jersey kai Rus, who is further back in the group. You can just see, uh, we caught a glimpse of him there. His sleeves, he's about eight back. And of course, this is a nice, comfortable ride for the man in the yellow jersey. They'll look after the interests of him. They won't want him to be breaking uh, the front of the field and, of course, cutting his way through the wind. But the four ahead and looking pretty good to me. They are. Darren Lapthorne on the front of the group. He won a stage of the Tour de Boost in Canada earlier on in the season. He took stage three of that race and that really springboarded uh, what has been now a great season for him with that Tour Series win up in Chester when he returned and as we've said already the Australian Road Race Champion in 2007. Let's just speculate a little bit about this group because uh, De Ghent is four minutes and 40 seconds back in overall classification 103rd. So despite the fact that he's leading two of the classifications he has lost time because of all his efforts toward the end of each stage so he's not a danger overall but the danger man are definitely Reimer who's only 26 seconds back uh, seventh that's how he started the stage so if he starts picking up seconds advantage along the way then that's going to be to his advantage and at the moment with that kind of lead Reimer is the yellow jersey on the road and also second will be Ruig, who started the stage 25th at 26 seconds. Well, we uh, just saw Reimer talking into his race radio because we're now on to the King of the Mountains at Bowden Hill. It's 1.6 miles long, this climb, so it's going to test the legs out a little bit. 
So this will give us an idea of just how the riders are performing on the climb. Rabobank still there. They're quite happy to keep uh, the rhythm high at the front. And, of course, their manager, Eric Decker, who's a former top professional in his day, he'll have the tactics worked out precisely. Looking behind the Rabobank team, we can see the Joker Bianchi squad, who've got Alexander Kristoff lying in third place overall at the start this morning. He was playing down his chances, actually, of even staying third overall because he said, I'm not good on the climbs and I don't think I can hold on to that overall position but you just never know. Well when they get to the summit of this climb they will have covered uh, 24.7 miles and remember the leg today is 95 miles so it's still pretty early on and there's a lot of fresh legs down there but isn't that a glorious shot looking down on the peloton in this wonderful part of the world terrific scenery around here ideal for walking of course it's uh, a place that's visited by many many tourists. Well there's without doubt it's it's a great place to ride a bike and dramatic scenery when you get into the Scottish borders. We're going to race through some little narrow roads as well over some twisty bridges. So technically, you've got to be very competent on a bike whooshing down these descents. So as we see the rider at the back, Rug in the Vacancelay colours. Early stages of the uh, stage here took the riders down the Tweed Valley, which is a very big fishing area. Now, look at this. This is an early strike for the line at the summit of the climb and can you believe it it's that man that you just can't control Thomas de Ghent the Belgian that's going to come to the top to pick up the four points thank you very much well he started the day with a four point advantage in the polka dot jersey leading Martin Mortensen but that's going to give him a further advantage now so there it is four points for de Ghent Ruik picking up the three Lapthorne the two and Reimer the one this man is so unbelievably strong. He's uh, got a different style of bike racing, really. He said at the start, well, if I go on the attack, it means that all the other riders have to feel more pain in their legs to bring me back. So he <laughs> likes to go out and dish some pain to everybody else, and that's what he's doing yet again today. He certainly does, and I know we've said it in commentary in the first two stages, but it is worth reiterating, he is a first-year pro, a neo-prof, as they call him, and I know that you at the start spoke to his manager about him, and I think you also spoke to one or two other people, and they said, this fella is somebody to watch. Well, just to give you another bit of background, uh, Hugh, he rode for the Davo team uh, in Belgium, which uh, he was a teammate of a rider you'll know, Adam Blythe, Absolutely. who's just signed a contract with the Silence Lotto team. Adam Blythe, another product from Sheffield, actually, and he cut his teeth uh, on the track. That's why he's very, very speedy on the wooden boards, but he's wanted to uh, become a pro on the road, and he's gone to Belgium, as you pointed out, and he's uh, gone and done it on his own, and he's now found himself a contract with that very impressive team. Now then, I'm just wondering if John Herity, the manager of Rafa Condor, has worked out some sort of a plan today, because he's got Lapthorne up here, and Lapthorne at the moment uh, is looking pretty fresh. Well, yesterday it was the job of Chris Newton and Tom Southam to try and get in the mix for the Rafa Condor team, but it didn't quite work out for them. Today, they've got what they need. Absolutely right. They've read the move well, and they've placed a man in the early group. But it's all about can they stay away and profit from the move. Well, there's the peloton coming over the top of the climb. There's no points available for them. 114 kilometres to go, and the lead is now two and three-quarter minutes. So it's beginning to grow. We're going to take another break. Lots more to come. Welcome back, and the four leaders, Thomas de Ghent, Martin Reimer, Darren Lapthorne and Rob Ruig are still working well together, and that glorious shot tells us that they're getting close to the start of Lime Kiln Edge, the second climb of the day. Thomas de Ghent in the King of the Mountains jersey, setting the pace on the front, Ruig in the blue and yellow goes through the picture. He's what we call a stagy heir. He's been given his opportunity as a young rider to ride for this uh, professional team, Vac on Soleil. The gap... Three minutes and 17 seconds as we approach the King of the Mountains. It's growing all of the time, and these four are working very, very consistently. Just looking at the King of the Mountains, tucked in at the back there at the moment, Thomas de Ghent, he's already taken the first climb of the day to pick up four points. Now, if he tops this one, leading the others, he'll get six. 
Nice, nice, handy total at 10. And uh, the rubber bank have certainly been put on the back foot here and they're having to do a lot of work. Well, team time trial formation, the orange clad riders on the front. Look at the pace. It's certainly increasing all the time. The riders have now got a tailwind as they race their way down to Gretna Green for the stage finish. But it's all orange on the front of the peloton. Tell you what, if there was a prize for bravery in this race, I certainly think it would be Thomas de Ghent that would win it because every time the stage starts, he is the man that attacks immediately. Now, this aerial shot just underlines the magnificent picturesque scenery that the riders are battling it out through today. And at the back, it's Lapthorn. I'm just wondering if he's just trying to save a little bit of strength for the closing stages. He is the former Australian champion, as you mentioned a little earlier, Anthony. And, of course, under the guidance of John Herity, maybe he's got a game plan to try and nail a prize today when they do get to Gretna. Well, the peloton absolutely dwarfed by the uh, scenery left and right of them as Rabobank continue with the effort. And now Rob Rugg on the front for the Vaconsolet team, the 22-year-old setting the tempo up the climb. So analytically, if you start to look at it, there are five here from the Rabobank team versus four at the head of the race. So I suppose if this was the contest that continued to unfurl to the finish, you really have got to favour the strength of five against four. But at the moment, it's Reimer, the German champion, looking good on the front and in that polka dot jersey as the king of the mountains is the Belgium again sitting second. Well, this climb is 1.6 miles in total, so it will test these riders out. But as we know, in the, the borders, you've got uh, dramatic descents and lots of climbs, so these legs are going to hurt. Over the top now. And it is De Ghent. He distances himself from the rest, and that is another nice collection of points. Six confirmed, as you can see. Reimer for second, five. Rui gets the four, and Lapthorn three. So he, so far, has amassed 10 points to Today on the two climbs that have taken place and that means his total is 31 points now in the King of the Mountains competition he is building a magnificent lead onto the descent and it's a fast one as you can see Lapthorn into the aerodynamic tuck this is a time when the riders also will try and take some food on board the peloton are nearing the top of this climb now and it's all going to be about the work of the Rabobank team as they race themselves down the descent to try and bring this breakaway back and when they cross the top of the climb they will have covered just shy of 50 miles which will leave 45 miles to sort the outcome of this out in Gretna Green and here at the back of the group then is Reimer the German champion putting on a gilet they do this of course to try and keep the chest warm it prevents them from getting a cold and uh, he looks to me to be struggling a little bit to get the zip up and oh he's given up <laughs> my goodness me well that's what happens and also what happens is if you take your eye off the road in front when you're looking down to see where the zip is then you can come a nasty cropper well you've got to uh, don't try that at home i don't think is probably the advice we would give to you as we see the rabobank team still maintaining the pace these uh, professional riders they're so at home on their bikes uh, but uh, reimer of course we talk about these riders having five to seven percent body fat he's got to keep himself as warm as possible Mortensen goes for the top of the climb. And there's also a uh, Halford's bike hut rider there as well. Nice to see somebody having a crack there. One of the uh, rangy riders in the team. Remember, they've got one or two tall men there. 325 the lead now. I think that may well have been Bibby. Bibby, of course, is a cyclocross specialist. He's been the national under 23 champion on two occasions. Bought into the team at the last moment, and he comes from the Preston area. Well, it looks to me now like the Rabobank team are getting a little bit of assistance from the Joker Bianchi team. It's Christoph, who's third place overall from this squad. So they've decided right now it's time that we give some assistance and bring this breakaway back because it's now starting to approach three and a half minutes. That's too big an advantage. And Christoph, of course, is a very, very strong sprinter. So obviously, if he can be in the shakeup at the end, maybe their team think that he will have a chance to threaten for the top spot.
but back to the head of the field there and they're now beginning to thin out in a long line and I know we say this every time but it is a fact that when this is the scenario that unfolds it's when the pace is lifting significantly. Well when Graham Jones designed this course down to Gretna Green he looked at the little narrow roads that are a little bit like Belgian classic roads or roads in Amstel Gold and uh, we've certainly been looking forward to seeing this stage. You've got to encounter gravel, you've got twists and turns and bridges and everything else and it makes for fascinating racing. And of course vigilance is the order of the day when the course as you say twists and turns in these narrow sections heading on towards uh, the next challenge of the day and that will be sprint number two and that's going to come at Newcastleton and that's in the intermediate sprint competition now then there is a significant amount of time taken back it's now two minutes and 39 seconds so you get the feeling now the blue touch paper has been lit and now the action is beginning to really unfold now we're approaching Newcastleton which is the next sprint point you so it'll be interesting to see what the time gap is when we reach that line here we go. Reimer it is then on the left of the screen deciding to go for a long one. Big effort by Reimer here and trying to get on terms with him is the Belgian de Ghent who gets into the wheel of Reimer but he's going to run out of distance. Yes, Reimer's done it. Time the move perfectly. That's the way to do it. Just catch them napping and then unload and that is exactly what he did. So Reimer picks up the maximum points for that sprint and de Ghent was over the line in second spot. So they all free will look at each other as De Ghent glances across, a bit of a smile at uh, each other, some sore legs and there are the points. And third place was Ruig and fourth Lapthorne. So that's a further increase in the lead in the intermediate sprint competition for Thomas De Ghent, this flying Belgium. Now earlier in the day, Ned caught up with the performance director of British Cycling. Well, Dave Brailsford, welcome to the Tour of Britain. Uh, what brings you here then? Well, obviously, you know, it's, um, it's the major event in, um, in our country um, and I'm here to give it my support and also to catch up with a few people and um, finish off a bit of business, I guess. Busy times. I mean, we've heard a few announcements from you. What are we up to now in terms of publicly announced riders that you've signed? Well, we've announced the first kind of raft of, of riders that we've signed and, um, and that's been a, an enjoyable process and kind of made the whole thing a reality, to be honest. And, um, and we'll be announcing some more um, in the coming days. Uh, to finalise the uh, the rider roster, um, but we're really kind of focusing now on the end of the year and making sure that all the planning and uh, and the infrastructure is in place so that we can get going and and do what we're all about, which will be about racing and um, and fi finalising this kind of first phase of, of building the project, if you like. So really looking forward to that. On last year's Tour of Britain, we saw Edvald Bosenhagen really come to the fore. He won three stages. Now he's a star name that you've signed there. He's a big big asset, isn't he? Yeah, a huge name. You know, real talent and. Um, when we first looked at uh, the international roster that we'd like to sign, he, he was pretty much the first name on the list. He's young, um, he's one of the most talented guys in the world, he's got all the attributes to be a brilliant champion, and um, he just fitted our model perfectly in terms of what the type of rider that we were looking for, young guys who could come together, form a real kind of uh, group with a team spirit to move forward, and, um, and so he was our sort of prime, number one target, and it was, um, it was really, really exciting when uh, the day came that he signed. Fantastic times for British cycling. Now then, Anthony, I'm going to put you on a spot before we get to the top of this final climb. There's about 27 miles to go. Two and a half minutes is the advantage. What do you think? I think it's a bit of a tough shout for these four to outpace the group. As we look there, the whiteboard comes up to show the leaders two minutes and at 12 seconds. So, Hugh, I think they need over three minutes, really, at this point to stay away from the peloton. However, if Joe Kabianki decide that they're not going to help the Rabobank team anymore, then there's a possibility this gap could go out again. But, of course, as you look at the head of the field here, it's still Rabobank looking very, very strong and positive. They've got everything to... Uh, go for here because they are remember looking after the yellow jersey now the four well they're still working pretty consistently we haven't seen a hint of fatigue yet if one of these riders was suddenly to lose contact then that could be one of the telltale signs right they've turned right now and they're starting the climb of hell or hill this is the final climb of the day well
well the final classified climb it's half a mile in length it's a little bit steep my other question really is the man on the front Thomas de Ghent he's got a lot of firepower early on in the stage but surely the fatigue of the last two days is going to start to tell on those legs and can he give enough firepower to keep this breakaway going well we've been saying that over the first two days haven't <laughs> we but I tell you every time the flag drops he's there he wants to be in the thick of the action and every day he is in the action there he is on the left of our screen and he doesn't want to surrender that jersey and he's making a cracking job of keeping hold of it this is Thomas de Gent new name to us at the start of this tour but it's certainly not going to be a new name by the conclusion I feel this is the chase behind Rabobank of course they're still there forced to keep tapping the rhythm out at the head of the field well I was just looking at the face of Darren Lapthorne as we made our way onto the climb and this rider from Australia was pulling faces uh, there so there's a lot of pain in those legs as we go for the top of the King of the Mountains and once again it's De Ghent that uh, obliges thank you very much he looks over the shoulder nobody's prepared to challenge him and he picks up another useful collection of points for Rug was second for three and Reimer came over the line to get the two and Lapthorne picked up the one so what it means now is he has amassed a staggering amount of points today to give his tally a lift to 35 and if my reckoning is correct with the climbs to come tomorrow this means if he didn't contest any of the climbs tomorrow he would not lose the leader's jersey in the mountains competition well a very impressive performance from de Ghent, darren lapthorne i'm just thinking a couple of days ago had a crash so maybe that grimace on his face is just feeling the effects of of the crash maybe that body's in more pain just because of that not the fatigue in his legs well as you look at the head of the field now there are colors of other teams beginning to uh, come forward they obviously want to get involved in the final hour outcome they're not I feel going to let these four get away with this easily there's going to be a right old scrap unfurling after this climb and here are the four again on the descent and as you said twists and turns and very narrow roads superb country for racing in actually and this kind of country generally favors a small group because the old saying out of sight is out of mind well if you can get on the attack as we see the peloton go over the top now then you can disappear and there it is then, the gap down to 1 minute and 46 seconds as we move into the closing stages. Welcome back. Our four leaders are still out front to the third and final sprint of the day at Langholm. Reimer leads over from De Ghent, but the Belgians still, of course, in possession of a massive 21-point lead for the white jersey. Let's pick up the action, but the bunch are closing fast. Well, once again, it's looking very much as though we're going to be treated to a bunch sprint. Now, the four are still ahead, and they will have received uh, that information on their radios from the manager. These are the three that have broken away off the front of the main field, taking up the chase. Two in blue from Agra Tubel, and the other member of the trio is from Cervelo Test Team. Well, the man on the back takes a drink. He's got to prepare himself for these riders who are racing across the gap. And it looks to me, I can see the French flag on the sleeve of this rider and it looks to me like the former champion of France Vagondi but they're just ahead of the peloton you can see that the action really is hotting up now and those three settling down to the chase to try and pull the four back but they haven't got a great deal of advantage over the main field and these are the kind of tactics we can expect to unfold in the closing stages it's an intriguing development these are the four still ahead and then I saw the main field coming into view and I think they've swept up those three well this uh, quartet have had an impressive day out on the roads down to Gretna Green and just think about Thomas de Ghent this means that this man has been on the attack for 233 miles of the Tour of Britain but there's some camaraderie now they're all smiling as de Ghent looks across well Reimer actually looked across at Lapthorne as much as to say well come on what are we going to do and now de Ghent looks back and of course what does he see he sees the peloton coming up fast and all four now have sat up and they They've decided to surrender. They know that uh, they're not going to stay away and they're waiting for the arrival of the main field. Still 
another blue jersey dangling off the front and look at this De Ghent the leader in the king of the mountains this Belgian you just cannot contain him he's on the attack again this is a really impressive effort but perfect tactics from De Ghent just as the junction is made by the peloton that's the time for the counter attack and he goes and one of the Agra Tubel riders trying now to track him and go away can De Ghent hold them off so the Agra Tubel squad are really keen to play a significant role in the closing stages of this third leg of the Tour of Britain. And they did actually win the third leg of the Tour of Britain 12 months ago. So maybe there's something about that stage. Well, I was talking to Geoffroy Lecat this morning and he was disappointed as we see the Italian champion Pozzato on the back of the group here. He was disappointed that the move he was in yesterday didn't go away. So he's saying maybe today, maybe today's the day that we can take the yellow jersey. Here goes the move with Agra Tubel on the front. And it is Agra Tubel then now tapping out the rhythm at the head of the race here. And he's still got the company with him tucked in at the back amazingly is still De Ghent this Belgium who's been on the go all day but now he's taking it on on his own and the others are sitting up waiting for the arrival of the main field well the testing terrain as we make our move into the finish this man from the Agra Tubel team just trying to prize a bit of an advantage and I was looking at Pizzato at the back of the group he's trying to take his leg warmers off as the action hots up but he hasn't got time to do so not the right time is it to do that and right at the back of the race is one of the Team Halford's Bike Hood squad and once again look at this the breakaway rider has been pulled back everybody wants to get in on the act here and the man that's doing the damage here looks like Vladimir Karpets the big Russian on the Katusha team was responsible for pulling them back on that occasion and again Agra Tubel have an attack this is the old one two isn't it one rider goes away when he gets pulled back fire another one off the front wow. the men in blue are really on fire this is impressive riding from the Agra Tubel team and sometimes when you've got a team of only six riders you'll see what they did there they attacked in twos and then they use their teammate as a springboard to open up an even bigger advantage and this man really gritting his teeth to try and go away is this the move that's going to pay off will the bunch sit up and lose a little bit of interest which will give him the advantage now that's the kind of thing that he wants just waiting for the number to come into view to confirm it's number two now this is Emilien Berges now Berges was the man that won stage three down to Burnham on Sea 12 months ago. Well, an impressive move from Burgess. Can he win stage three again? Well, obviously, his morale is high and he clearly hits form at this time of the year, swishing his way through that left hander onto the closed roads on the run in to the finish. The man at the back of the main field clinging to the back was the big fella himself, Ed Clancy, who comes from Huddersfield on the team, Halford's team. You can just see him on the right there. He's moved up a couple of places. Well, Clancy's a gold medal winner from Beijing in the 4,000 metre team pursuit. He's a big lad to haul that frame over these climbs. Well, Agra Tubel front and back of the race there as number three, Freddy Bichot, just sits in the slipstream of the rest of the peloton. But Bejes, a good time trialist, really throttling over a huge gear here as he tries to hold on and build a bit of an advantage. This is a similar scenario, isn't it, to yesterday when Kai Roos was ahead and he was being hauled back in the closing stages and Roos the Dutchman held on to seal the stage victory in Newcastle Gateshead but you know it really is a big ask one rider just out in front and when the roads are straight like this that's the worst scenario to try and hold off a pack that really is building the pace yeah he won't want to look round right now because all you'll see is 98 riders across the road with a, a group of riders on the front teeth bared and trying to bore down on him and bring him back the king of the mountains right on the back of the peloton now Hugh it doesn't matter about that he's done enough work today to hang on to that uh, jersey and hang on to it big style and of course remember he's done enough to underline his authority in the intermediate sprint competition well it looks very much to me as though the field are going to come up then and uh, sweep up the lone leader here Emilien Berges the 26 year old Frenchman on the Agra Tubel team 
Well, I've said it, but now it looks as though he's going away again. He finds a little bit more throttle from somewhere and just opens up a little bit more of an advantage. But here come the peloton, and it's the colours of Columbia HTC. On the left-hand side, the yellow-clad team as they now take control. Columbia now obviously are going to be working for their sprinter, and their sprinter, of course, is the man carrying race number 21, the leader of the squad, and that's uh, Edvald uh, Bosenhagen. Well, Scotland is a lucky hunting ground for the Norwegian because he won the stage at Drumlanry Castle last year. Well, Maxime Montford swings across and now it looks to me like it'll be Tony Martin who may well be on the front. The white jersey of the Tour de France this year as they start to make moves. Here come Garmin Slipstream in the orange colours. Garmin Slipstream also want to get in on the mix here. Well, no more Cavendish here in this Tour of Britain, but still the train of Colombia on the left prepared to lead out their other sprinter. One kilometre to go, there it is, the red kite, a thousand metres to decide who is going to win this stage. Well, it's a long straight running. It's absolutely perfect for the sprinters in this field as we see them all lined out, swinging over. Here go Colombia yet again. Is Chris Sutton of the Garmin Slipstream team going to win? a second stage he said he can win three well the Australian Chris Sutton remember he was the one that won the fierce sprint in York 500 meters to go and it's the team of Colombia on the front beginning to lift the tempo here they're working for the flying Norwegian Edvald Bosenhagen who was uncontrollable in the Tour of Britain 12 months ago when he won three stages and here he comes look at this now he's beginning to turn on the style the awesome power of the Norwegian he's holding the rest at bay are they going to challenge him the meters are slipping away here and the line is getting ever nearer it's Bosenhagen on the front coming up to the line who's going to get it oh Bosenhagen gets it on the front Sutton was in the mix on the left of our screen and it looked as though he finished third and somebody was thumping the handlebars in disgust there as much as to say well I mistimed it I reckon I could have got it here we are closing stages coming up to the line Bosenhagen you can see him looking for the line now Sutton on the left trying to get through he's not going to do it though Bosenhagen throws his bike at the line to win and how often did we see this during the month of July? A high-fiving, happy Columbia huddle, but this time for Cav, Reed Bohagen, Dave Brailsford, delighted with his new signing. He powered to victory in the end, and with that served notice of greater intention. The Norwegian then headed the field home from Mikkel Merlo, the young Italian who continues to hold his own. Chris Sutton was in third. Russ Downing, who fancied his chances today in front of his new boss, managed sixth. Garant Thomas came in tenth. Wiggins watchers had to wait 51 seconds after the winner to see him cross the line. He's got five more days though to make his mark. Darren Lapthorne's day ended horribly. A double puncture as he was caught by the bunch left him over 12 minutes down on the day. But it was Edvald Bosenhagen who took to the podium first. A big name now, unlike this time last year. You won three on last year's Tour of Britain. Uh, I should imagine you believe you can do that again. Yeah, everything is possible but it's a hard race and a lot of things can happen and last year I think it was not that many who knew my name and who I, who I was so maybe it's harder to get in a breakaway this year. And what about the brilliant tour of young Thomas de Ghent on the attack for the third consecutive day and sweeping up nine more sprint points en route as well as 14 more towards his King of the Mountains total. Yesterday when we interviewed him he assured us he wouldn't attack today so today we didn't bother interviewing him at all. Kai Royce hangs on to yellow though, Rabobank flogging themselves to chase down the break and give their man another day in his jersey of choice. Kai, congratulations. How difficult was that? How hard did you have to work? So for me it was today uh, easy, but for the team it was really hard for working. And uh, so, but it was a beautiful day here in Scotland. It was uh, up and down, and yeah, I am I'm uh, like Scotland, uh, and there yeah, was very very nice. Tomorrow's another day. Do you think it's gonna? You told me before. You think it might be your last day in yellow. Why? Why do you think that? No, uh, maybe. Uh, uh, Hagen is a very uh, strong sprinter, and uh, he's now maybe uh, seven seconds behind me. So uh, tomorrow he maybe you win, and he's your leader. And uh, so yeah, then uh, we see. Yeah, I don't know.
A glance at GC tells the story, although it's not quite as bad as Kai Royce makes out. His lead is actually 11 seconds over Bosenhagen. So the Norwegian needs to win tomorrow and pick up bonus seconds on the road if he wants to be sure of taking the yellow jersey. Chris Sutton's in third, Mikkel Merlo's in fourth. Russ Downing flying the flag for Britain back in eighth at 25 seconds. Well, we knew that sooner or later Edvald Bosenhagen would show himself on this Tour of Britain, and it happened today, didn't it? I mean, he's a special rider, isn't he, Graham? He is. We saw him last year winning three stages, and uh, it's not taken long to get into his stride this year. We weren't sure what sort of form he had coming into the race, but he's proved himself today. Top rider, not necessarily a top interviewee, or perhaps that's my, my uh, questioning tactics. I do find it hard to get the substance out of him, but that doesn't matter. Dave Brailsford has identified his talent, and he's, he's latched onto that, isn't he? Yeah, he's certainly capable of winning stages in any uh, major stage race that, uh, in the future. And also, But I, th I do think he's going to turn into a very good uh, uh, one-day classics rider as well. Because he's versatile, he can get over the hills and, and do the business. And with that in mind, look at him lurking there in GC. I mean, he could make a move for that yellow jersey sooner rather than later, couldn't he? Yeah, I certainly think he's capable of getting over the climbs that we've got lined up over the rest of the route. And uh, he, he will be a major contender, I'm sure. What about tomorrow? Bit lumpy? Cat one climb? It is. It's uh, Waddington Fells, a well-known climb in cycling, uh, but also before that we've got some uh, really tough uh, terrain before that. Uh, I don't think it's going to split it to pieces tomorrow, but I do see a, a sort of fairly large group still coming into Blackpool. Yeah. Excellent. Thanks very much. Gretna Green has been terrific, as indeed has Scotland, but tomorrow we're back over the border and into Blackpool for a stage that starts and finishes on the seafront. See you there.